Thank you very much. Um, I am not Nathaniel. Uh, Jason Heman. I, uh, Nathaniel was uh, sadly unable to make it, and so he asked me to sub in, and I'm just going to do my best. And he he uh, asked me to just read a couple parts here, and he started with thanking Will and John and the rest of the program committee, and he mentioned being disappointed that he wasn't able to make it in person, but hope that if you have questions, suggestions, proofs the whole thing couldn't work or otherwise, uh, that he'd love to get in touch by email and hopes to make contact with some of the folk uh, digitally that he wasn't able to get in touch with in person. Uh, so he said that uh, he didn't have a theoretical background, but that this problem came out of addressing something practical that happened at work at a previous corporation that did a lot of work with linked data and RDF stores that involved a uh, kind of graph database. And he, when thinking about it, puzzling it over, uh, mold on it and found that it was related to temporal logic programming. And he reached out to some uh, work in the scheme community based around the mini Canron programming language. And he wrote it up as a way to extend mini Canron with fa uh, facilities for doing temporal logic. The paper itself comes in three pieces, a low level theoretical part uh, and then a practical part finally. So I'm going to start by walking through some of the background, low level implementation details. Uh, and eventually, if I can have time to get through it, go back to working with the toy RDF store that was built with microcanner. So first off, temporal logic. Um, when using logic programming to model or interact with stateful resources, it's useful and convenient to have a way to reason about time. To this end, temporal logic, and particularly linear temporal logic, has been formalized as a modal extension to predicate logic. And uh, most definitions of linear logic begin with two modal operators, the next and until operator, which are used to construct larger sets of operators for conveniently reasoning about time. Uh, informally speaking, uh, for formulas A and B, we say that XB holds if B is true in the next time step, and a UB holds if A is true until B is true, and B is eventually true. There's been a number of implementations of linear temporal logic that have been proposed as extensions to logic languages, such as Prolog, but that this paper stems from a simple insight that analogous modeling of linear time uh, could be built into many Canon languages. Uh, which are shallowly embedded logic programming DSLs with an interleaving depth first search. Adding a single temporal primitive and adapting the interleaving search strategy to account for the concepts of now and later allows us to build tools for temporal reasoning that turn out to integrate nicely. And the new temporal primitive gives us a way to control simultaneity and goal construction in many canon programs, and they extend a number of interesting generalizations. Uh, there's a handful of additional operators that can be built out of these uh, original ones. And so I want to next turn to the, uh, some basics of uh, micro Canron uh, upon which the temporal logic implementation is built. Um, came out of a couple of uh, author, uh, articles by myself and Dan Friedman. And I'm just going to walk through a couple of the details. Uh, micro Canron programs uh, operate by applying a goal to a state and producing a new stream of results. The program itself can succeed or fail, and when it succeeds, returns a sequence of new states. Uh, these are substitutions. The uh, four basic constructors we can see here, call fresh, creates a new uh, logic variable, dish implements disjunction, the double equal sign is uh, typically syntactic equality, and there's also a conjunction operation. He wanted to point out that the full implementation from uh, fits on two slides, and uh, I'll note that this one even went to a higher font size. So that. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the interleaving itself is a guaranteed complete search and uh, doesn't have the same, uh, typically the same performance penalty that we get from breadth first search. Uh, and it shows up in the second case of M plus by uh, flipping these two, uh, the, the flipping of those two uh, streams in that area. And so how to model time in micro Canron. Uh, what he did was adding a third stream type that he called delayed streams and to represent goals that are delayed until a later point in time. 
and we represent delayed streams by promises and construct them with a temporal goal constructor next, like the next of x operator we saw before. Uh, this uses a, uh, a explicit delay operation, and his version of m plus differentiates between procedures uh, 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 created by lambdas and actual promises that come from delays. Uh, the delayed goals prom uh, promises are shunted right, and all promises at the same nested level are recombined together. Among other properties, this preserves the order independence of conjunction and disjunction. Um, bind also needs to be modified uh, by adding an additional case to delay the binding of delayed streams with a goal. The utility function forward uh, is used to fast forward through the enclosing delayed stream. And he said that the resulting 53 lines of code that make up the functional core of our temporal micro -canron, and to keep the subsequent code simple, he, he says we've extended the mini canner wrappers from the original paper, paper to handle these delayed streams, and that's all in the appendix if you're interested to play with the implementation. Um, so in this, uh, uh, in this first example, we use dish to specify a queue that, equ uh, that equates uh, to this database either now or at the next point in time. And the first solution in the result a return stream is none other than one, the current value of the DB, while the promise contains the delayed stream to be evaluated at a future point in time. We can update the database and advance, and the shunt write mechanism turns out to have interesting properties for interleaving search, even without referring to a stateful resource. For example, in ordering or grouping solutions, uh, as we get from the from the small example. Uh, this inco recursively generates a now or later type of goal, incrementing its variable at each future point in time, and the program s uses this inco to generate pairs of such incrementing variables. And as we advance S, we see the solutions are grouped in an increasing order of the maximum value of the two variables. And so this points to the difference between the two basic uses or interpretations of temporal micro -canron. In the first, when interacting with a stateful resource, we're doing logic programming in time. When reasoning about time in a truly relational way, on the other hand, we're more interested in the combinatoric properties of next. Uh, and we'll talk about this uh, distinction later as we go through. Um, so moving towards temporal relational program. Um, as, we mentioned, as I mentioned in the introduction, linear temporal logic extends predicate logic with these modal operators referring to linear time. And several of the operators we mentioned can be recovered in temporal micro -canon using that next primitive that we define. Uh, we're not going to develop a formally complete system, but uh, provide some examples that suggest how it might be uh, developed further. So most of those temporal operators that we uh, pointed out earlier need to be defined recursively. And when doing that, it's uh, important to control when the goal is constructed, since that might refer to a stateful resource. For temporal micro -canon, we do this by wrapping goals in lambdas, which are then evaluated when they're supposed to be evaluated. Uh, the definition proceeds, which is modeled on the weak until operator, stipulates that a goal W holds at least until a second goal H holds, shows how that can be done. The uh, always operator uh, shows one of the pitfalls of naively mapping until uh, temporal, uh, mapping temporal logic to relational programming. The first impulse was to define it kind of like we did until, um, but some experimentation shows off that this is uh, problematic. Always will return a promise so long as the goal encloses holds and the empty stream as soon, uh, as soon as it fails. And that's useful for programs that want to verify whether a state still holds, but al uh, always will never construct a mature stream of solutions since clearly the goal will never have been true forever, at least not in linear time. Um, and so there's several ways to address the solution. One is implementing an as long as operator. Uh, and you should, in temporal logic, we should see this as kind of a temporal logic analogy to uh, the cuts that we'd see in standard logic programs. Um, the, another way to Im implement it is the eventually operator that has some uh, neat applications, but it's also got a similar problem with uh, infinite time. The naive implementation shown here is useful in some contexts, 
but a guarded implementation uh, provides more intuitive behavior, cutting off further recursion when the goal produces a non-empty stream of solutions. So keep going until you get something. Uh, either one can define an analog of the uh, strong until operator, uh, which along with next was one of the two building blocks we needed for temporal linear logic. This is just a beginning, and as the example suggests, what constitutes a useful temporal relational programming language is uh, determined part by what you, the application designer, intending to use it for. Uh, still developing a formally satisfying version of such a system, uh, Nathaniel says, would be an obvious next step. And all of the sidestepping at infinite time also begs the question of what it really means to model it, uh, something we don't explore further here, but that he wanted to address. Uh, the other interesting area he suggests would, uh, would be recovering temporal micro canons functionality in a version of mini canon with constraints, uh, which we've seen addressed in several different uh, constraint micro canon solutions. So the actual application. Uh, the primitive next can be used to implement a simple data store with temporarily aware incremental search. Uh, we begin by describing the implementation, then present the full code. Uh, so our goal is to design an RDF database, or a triple store, using temporal micro as the query language. Uh, that should calculate new or invalidated solutions to specific queries as records are updated in the database. That next construct, together with a simple system of incremental indices, uh, will allow us to store a search position for a query and running a query will re return both the current results and a delayed stream that when we advance it will continue searching the current tree's leaves. So advancing the stream after the database has been updated will continue to return solutions that have been added to or subtracted to from the solution set. Uh, the RDF uh, database stores semantic facts or triples made up of a subject, a predicate, and an object. Uh, a minimalist triple store, uh, such as this example. A minimalist triple store can be implemented using three indices, allowing for the retrieval of a group of triples matching a given query pattern. Uh, and Nathaniel points out parenthetically that yes, this is an oversimplification. Um, so after adding a triple ABC uh, to the seven incremental indices, we get something like the following. The main accessor uh, is the goal constructor triple no low. Uh, that's triple now or later that descends recursively through the incremental indices one level at a time, constructing a stream with the current indices and saving the last search position in a delayed stream. A dynamic partner uh, parameter is used to specify the current database state. So to see this in action, consider a small query written in Sparkle 1.1. Uh, that's the standard RDF data store query language. So by translating into temporal micro and running against states of the database, uh, we first need to define an empty database. Um, and the, uh, oh, uh, let's see. So uh, the Sparkle query is translated into a temporal micro goal using triple NOLO. Uh, I think I lost where I was supposed to be here. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Where in practice we're going to want to know if the uh, solutions, uh, if we had all of them or one of the solutions was removed. And for, the, uh, for a first query, there were no solutions. Uh, so we're going to add some triples to that solution and advance the delayed stream. And if we delete a triple that contributed to one of our solutions, um, then the solution will be returned with a negative delta flag in the next iteration. Uh, in, uh, in a sec, uh, if we add that triple back along with some new solutions, uh, we'll get positive deltas coming out. And so here we've been proceeding linearly, but since the database states are persistent, we can calculate deltas over any two states. 
and keeping track of a stream of states and indexing them on time gives us a truly time traveling data store. Um, so uh, we could walk through, uh, I'm not going to have a chance to walk through the full implementation, but I'll get through as much as I can and then refer you to the paper for the rest. So we'll, uh, let's see, the database itself is defined as a set of uh, seven incremental indices um, and you, uh, plus the SPO index. As we mentioned above, we keep a separate incremental index for each index level and store the incrementals as a simple cons list uh, along with a map for quick existence checking. For each index itself, we use a hash, wrapped make, uh, hash array mapped try uh, that allows persistently storing successive states of the database uh, through path copying. Um, and so to select a path through the indices, uh, All right, actually, I'm going to skip walking through this construction, but instead refer you to full code online, and that's Nathaniel's email. He suggested very much reaching out if you are interested in either working with logic programming in RDF, uh, continuing work and extending microcanon, or in temporal logic programming. Once again, thank you all very much. I'd say I, I don't know that I'm going to uh, take a Q&A as much open to discussion. Uh, I know there had been previous work with uh, using microcanner logic programming for Sparkle queries and RDF work. And uh, uh, I'd seen at least a couple of talks in this area. And I, uh, Ryan Sr. gave that a, a few years back. And I want to know if anybody else had been experimenting with using uh, microcanon in database work or with uh, updates. Will, what have you? I'm paid by a national institute of health to, to do that every day. Ah. We have a, a new graph database and we have a new graph database. Oh, this is, so this is Medicanon. I only knew the name. It's a medical application of Medicanon uh, as part of the NCATS data translator project. So mm. Oh, I did. Okay, that's like honestly, all I knew was the name in the picture. And Ryan Cena likes to be right outside that door. Oh, excellent. <laughs> okay, so a third person who's interested, Ryan Senior's around here somewhere. All right. Well, thank you all very much.